Welcome aboard, Joe Holbrook here, the Cloud Tech Guy. Wanted to reach out, do a quick shout out about the top 10 things to know for the GCP Associate Cloud Engineer exam. Now I've been getting a lot of um, contact on YouTube as well as LinkedIn uh, around, um, you know, what to do for this exam. Should I take the Cloud Engineer exam before the architect or vice versa? or I'm, I'm new to Google, but I'm certified in AWS. And the reality is that there's no right or wrong answer here. It really, you know, depends on your experience. And the reality is, is that some people are gonna be really good at architecture. Some folks are gonna be much better at management. But if you're gonna take the cloud engineer exam, you need to be aware that this is a very command line heavy exam. Now, what do I mean by that? For this exam, you need to know, for example, gcloud commands, such as gcloud projects list. You need to also know, for example, how to uh, change projects in the SDK, but you also need to know um, with gcloud, when you install it, one of the first things you're gonna have to do after you install it locally is initialize gcloud. Command for that is gcloud init. If you wanna view information about the version of the SDK you have, gcloud info, uh, or, or version, I should say. And then, um, you know, there's also, um, too, um, a lot of uh, uh, questions that are gonna focus on not just projects, but I wouldn't say at least two that were focused on um, IAM and organization. So you want to know, for example, gcloud IAM and know some of the main um, syntaxes for IAM, but also organization as well. And then Kubernetes. So you need to know kube commands, but you also need to know gcloud Kubernetes commands as well, like gcloud docker or gcloud container, gcloud builds. So be aware of, of some of those. Okay, so that's number one and two. Number three. Know the difference between cloud source repositories, cloud build, and container registry. Okay, cloud source repositories, again, if you're gonna go ahead and manage your source code, keep it secure, um, you know, again, solid solution. Cloud build is really um, a great tool um, for deploying pipelines, for example, CI, CD pipelines. And then container registry, um, again, um, you know, some people will confuse repositories versus a registry, for example. And again, you know, a lot of it just comes down to you understanding that container registry is meant for your Docker container images. It's meant to store them, management, uh, manage them, for example. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, Cloud SQL and Cloud Spanner. Know that again, SQL, Cloud SQL, and Cloud Spanner. Are, are meant for your relational database. But again, it's really the use case. Cloud SQL is really meant to deploy regionally, whereas Cloud Spanner is meant to be deployed more geo-wide, um, uh, essentially, more geographically, more dispersed, I should say. Now, once again, it really comes down to the use case. Do you, um, you know, need to have transaction consistency? Um, do you need to have um, specific features or functions? A lot of that just comes down to, um, you know, being able to make a decision between um, the requirements. Now, big table and BigQuery. A lot of confusion with those. Big table um, and a BigQuery, very different use cases. Cloud Data Store and Cloud Firebase, again, very different use cases as well. Uh, when you see Firebase, that tells you that it's mobile, uh, a mobile use case, so just be aware. There's also Firestore as well. I only saw one question related to Firebase, so if you don't know much about it, I wouldn't focus on it, but if you do see anything mobile, it could be a toss-up uh, based on the fact that it's Data Store or Firebase. But again, big table, big query. Again, do you need to have, um, you know, a data warehouse, or do you need to have um, a managed service, uh, for example? Okay. And number five, 
Know your use cases for the data services such as cloud storage, app engine, Kubernetes engine, cloud pub sub, and cloud data flow. Once again, uh, make sure you know those use cases. I won't go through every one here for time purposes, but I, I did want to just point that in your direction. Know how to deploy Windows on Compute Engine. Okay, now this is an area that sort of surprised me, but it is a um, cloud engineer exam, management exam. One of the things they're going to ask you is, what is the best way to deploy Windows and do it securely? So how do you set up, for example, um, with Deployment Manager, the best way to deploy your Windows machines, but also to how to authenticate? So make sure that you understand how to, um, to do that as well. Also know IAM permissions, know what service accounts are. There's a couple questions, or actually uh, two questions from what I remember regarding service accounts. Now, the service accounts um, are going to be more focused on, again, you know, how do you go in to the service accounts? Because they want details on this exam. And where do you go in IAM to basically um, assign really granular per permissions? And that's where you want to practice in the uh, interface to make sure that you know where to go. Another area was they asked about auditing and audit logs. Now, when it comes to, to auditors, audit logs, setting permissions, one of the areas you'll want to focus on to make sure that you appreciate is how to add permissions and how to be granular in those permissions. So, for example, if I'm going to add a new member, I can do that. Add, for example, a member that's been added. But I could also go and add specific roles. Now, App Engine, I want to point this out because sometimes this catches people. Is with App Engine, for example, there's um, right now there's uh, five specific roles. And if you're an auditor, you're going to want to, of course, give an auditor a viewer role, not an admin role or deployer role. Now, a developer, again, uh, would probably get a deployer role, whereas an auditor would get a viewer role. Now, I know that sounds pretty straightforward, but on the exam, they're going to, of course, give you different permissions for App Engine, but also BigQuery, and perhaps I won't tell you the other one on top of my head, I remember, but it was either BigQuery or, um, geez, I want to say Cloud maybe, no, not Cloud Spanner, uh, Big Table, uh, or no, Data Flow or Data, one of those, data, one of these data ones. But uh, you need to know, for example, here, like Data Flow, there's a worker. Well, what is a worker? Well, worker is, um, again, really meant um, for service account. This is to go out and, you know, grab, uh, you know, for example, batch files or to drop them off. That's what it is. Whereas a viewer and developer is going to be a little different. So App Engine, you definitely want to know that. I saw that on the exam, but know the rules. So auditors should get viewer permissions. Now let's go over to billing. So we have billing. We have a project billing manager. This is, again, you could disable that or enable that. And then BigQuery, you can see that BigQuery has quite a bit of roles. Now, what about if you want to go ahead and um, give basically um, what is called a session access, basically like one-time access to go in and just view log files. Well, this might be the better permission, but there's also to data viewer and metadata viewer. So this is where a lot of the trickiness comes in, I think, at least when I took the exam. Um, knowing some of these little roles, especially, might be a little bit on the tricky side. So just be aware that uh, you do want to know some of the granular roles and what to give an auditor, for example. Now, Stackdriver. Uh, you can expect a couple questions on Stackdriver. Uh, a couple of things about Stackdriver. If you're going to set up Kubernetes, any kind of containers, the easiest way 
to deploy stack driver monitoring or logging is to set it up in basically the console when you're deploying it. So let's let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here. Now I'm over here in the Kubernetes cluster um, interface here in the console. Now when you're deploying a cluster, um, basically this is the standard cluster template. Um, one of the questions is really asking about what would be the easiest way to deploy stack driver monitoring for your cluster. And of course they had some really good options, run this command, run that command, or there is actually another one that was, I won't give you the exact gist, but basically the simplest way is to, to basically enable it. When you're creating the cluster, these can be enabled and it's very simple. Just leave it by default and it'll deploy logging and monitoring. Now, of course, if you don't need it, turn it off. But again, this is the simplest way to enable Stackdriver logging or monitoring. Just be aware that uh, uh, sometimes uh, things are in plain sight. I'll leave it at that. Let's move on. Next question, um, or actually next item, is to uh, go to number nine. So we talked about permissions and Stackdriver. Okay. BigQuery pricing. Okay. Now, one of the, the things about BigQuery pricing is that uh, a lot of people aren't going to know about it. <laughs> and uh, unless if, you know, you're an architect uh, and pricing out with the calculator, you may not even have a clue how it's priced. So you want to go to the GCP calculator and um, know that there's at least uh, two subscription models and that storage is additional. There's on-demand and there's flat rate. So let's take a quick look. So I'm at the uh, calculator. So what you want to do is go over here to BigQuery. And you'll see that it's priced on-demand and flat rate. One of the things that uh, you'll want to know is that storage is additional. Now on-demand, uh, as you would expect, is you're going to spin it up when you need it and turn it off when you don't. Flat rate is more of a subscription based. There's different plans. You don't really need to know that detail, but you'll notice that storage pricing again is an additional cost. On demand and flat rate. So make sure you know that. The other thing I'm going to point out um, is go over to App Engine. Now we should already know that App Engine has two environments. It has flexible and it has standard. Now, standard is priced instances per hour, but there's also additional costs for APIs and services. Anything that you exceed over the free tier that's given to you, or free limit, I should say, uh, is an additional cost. So logging, uh, API storage, network traffic. But flexible is actually priced based on um, the number of cores, memory, and then persistent disk. So make sure that you are aware of those um, areas for the exam. Again, those are the only pricing questions that I saw. But uh, with that said, I want to point out because this could be an area that will confuse you if, if you're not familiar with it. Let's move on. And then number 10, how to save billing info, but also how to query against it. Now, when you go into billing, and I'm going to walk you through this here in a second, you can go into billing and query against it. Now, to do that, you need to do what? You have to save your bills and save them to what? Cloud storage. But you could import them to BigQuery, and I'll show you how and where to find that. One of the things, too, that caught me by surprise on the exam was that they asked where to go in billing to get this information. So there's a couple questions on billing. It wasn't just one question, but you definitely need to know that JSON and BigQuery, those are things you, know, you need to know for the exam. So let me go ahead and point out in the console what you want to focus on. I'm over here in billing, and you could see that I have um, basically, I'm under billing and under billing export. I have two options. I could do an export to BigQuery, 
or I could file export. Now I could export this as a CSV or I could export it as a big query file. Now this is basically going to be a data set and to do that, I got to go into here and edit the settings. So to do that, I have to go into BigQuery and create a um, data set uh, to do that. But if I want to do like a file export, I could also edit the settings as well and save it as a CSV or JSON. Those two formats you'll want to know for the exam. It's either CSV or JSON. Those are the formats for a file export. However, there's also BigQuery uh, export as well. So don't get confused um, between the two. Now, if I want to um, export this, what I would want to do is go over here and make sure you can see that I have it saved to a bucket. Remember, Cloud Storage needs to um, have the permission set up as well to export those files to Cloud Storage. CSV and JSON know those as well. Let's move on. So those are the top 10 things I think you want to know. Uh, if you have any questions on anything, feel free to reach out. Uh, for those interested, there's also additional training. I do host on Pearson Safari. Um, uh, about every two months, a cloud engineer live online, eight-hour course split over two days. And then I also have a recorded session as well that's about seven hours. Uh, and there's also practice tests that are available as well. The links for those are going to be down below in the description. I do wish you luck on the exam. I, I certainly would love to hear feedback if this is helpful. And also, too, if you haven't looked at the other GCP Cloud Engineer and Cloud Architect, and also coming as a cloud developer as well, uh, around um, the top 10 things to know for that exam as well. With that said, I wish you all luck, and I hope to see you again in one of my classes. Take care.